Hey everyone, so I plan to make this tutorial part of a rather lengthy series where I'll sort of challenge my Java skills by creating a rather simple top-down Pokemon style video game and all the while explaining the steps to you. So in part one of this series you'll learn the basic steps of any top-down game really uh, creating your levels. So I will walk you through the tools needed and where to find them and then show you what I've learned so far. So for this video we'll be using a pretty straightforward software uh, compared to some of the tools we will be using later on down the road. Uh, the software in this video is called Tiled. It's a 2D level editor used to develop the assets used in your game. There's a whole bunch of different ways to create your levels or maps, but I really enjoy the pixel slash Minecraft block style editor that Tiled gives you. If you're at all familiar with Photoshop, think of Tiled as the stamp tool where you basically just paint areas of your canvas and, and then you can export it to your game. Alright, so the first thing you're going to need is, of course, the Tiled application. You can download it from the link shown here in the video, or you can get it down below in the description. Uh, the software is free, but they do kindly ask that you tip the developers. It is a really awesome application, and it cuts down a ton of time as far as asset creation. So do tip the developers if if you plan on uh, getting some use out of the application. So anyways, once you install the app, head over to the website called itch.io as seen here. It's a huge collection of open source video game assets and you can actually filter them by video game style, if you will. So in the filter column, you can actually click top down and it will only give you top down assets. And that's what we're looking for. So. So browse through the various assets there on that website, but do make sure that you ultimately choose a 32 by 32 design. Otherwise, you'll have to tinker with the tiled settings a little bit, but more on that later. Once you do get the tiled software installed, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is create a new project. I did go ahead and make a new directory or a folder to save the project in. That way we can keep all of those assets we downloaded from itch.io in the same spot. All right, once you have that new project saved, go ahead and leave all the map settings the same. We're not gonna go into those too much. Uh, you make the map size as large or as small as you want. Remember for a top-down game, the player's typically uh, zoomed way in, so you don't need to get too crazy with it. Uh, then, as I said previously, the tile size on the right is going to be very important here. You're going to want to make sure that this actually matches uh, the game assets you went with uh, from itch.io. Uh, the default is usually 32 by 32, uh, depending on how detailed you want to get. But go ahead and click OK when you get that done. And now we can load those game assets. So over on the right, you'll click the new tile set button there to do just that. Uh, locate those files you just downloaded and go ahead and import each PNG uh, or tile set or sprite sheet, whatever you want to call them, uh, one by one. Uh, those are typically divided into buildings, pathways, and objects. So you'll see here, folder full of flags. So we'll go ahead and get the important ones that we're definitely going to need to go ahead and get started, which are typically your paths and your buildings. All right, and now we can go ahead and actually begin designing that level. Uh, I know we ran through those steps rather quickly, so do let me know in the comments down below if you have any questions or you get stuck along the way. So this next part is where you can get a little creative. Uh, on the top right column there of the the tiled application, you'll see uh, the layers tab. I like to start with those base layers, uh, paths, roadways, buildings, trees, objects, uh, respectively, and then add or uh, adjust, move your layers accordingly as you go. A uh, quick tip is do you remember to always switch back to the correct layer when changing the tile? And when I say tile, I'm just referring to a single one by one pixel. Uh, that's just our basic clone stamper tool if you will and then you can select the paint bucket or marquee tool up there in the 
title or menu bar uh, so you can paint the whole area rather quickly um, and then you have a ton more features up there as well uh, you can rotate and flip your tiles uh, lasso tool you can move uh, rather quickly um, but if you're on a PC um, and you can just use your scroll mouse and a combination of control scroll mouse shift all uh, just to move around your canvas quickly so I went ahead and placed a few city buildings and as you saw in the thumbnail uh, we're making sort of a retro cyberpunk style city so buildings are a must-have uh, we can change up the structure of those buildings too just by changing the height and add or removing a floor or two uh, no doors yet since our player will interact with uh, buildings uh, well the buildings we want the player to go into we probably will want to uh, either make a new layer or add our doors uh, onto our objects layer once we get to that point. So now roads and pathways, or you can start with roads or pathways, whichever uh, you prefer. And again, I'm just slightly mixing up these road tile pieces uh, to sort of mix up the overall look and feel of the level and add some depth to it. And to rotate those roadway tiles that you just saw, uh, that's our rotate tool, uh, as I mentioned before, Z or Shift Z. Uh, the flip and mirror tool is X and B, I do believe, if you're on uh, PC. And now let's add some more paths, some more buildings on the other side of that road. And I think what I will do is switch over to a time lapse for the remainder of this video, as uh, the rest of it's just pretty much my imagination.
guys, well for the most part anyways, our first level is complete. Continue playing around with those tools and let me know down in the comments if you want to see more tile level editor videos and or tutorials in the future. And in the next video I will teach you about object detection and we can find a character design for the actual player. Anyways, thanks for watching and I hope to see you all in the next one.